Taking off and landing are the deadliest parts of a flight. It's the shortest part of the journey, but anything can go wrong in the blink of an eye. 14% of plane accidents happens when the plane is taking off and climbs higher, and 49% of plane crashes happens when the plane is descending and touches down. Crazy, right? From runways hidden behind roundabouts on hilltops, to runways on beaches that blow people away, and even those made of solid glacial ice, some airports add extra layers of challenge to aircraft flying in. Here's why these seven airports are the scariest and most dangerous in the world. Welcome to Explained. Let's start with number seven, the Cristiano Ronaldo Madeira International Airport in Portugal. Only a limited number of pilots are qualified to fly here, and that's because of the crazy crosswinds. 400. The airport is surrounded by the ocean on one side and high mountains on the other, so planes have to deal with the Atlantic wind the mountain draft, and unpredictable weather. Landing sometimes happens only on a second attempt or even third. We asked a veteran commercial pilot to tell us what could be going on in the cockpit during moments like this. Coming in with a crosswind, first of all, when you're looking for the runway, it's going to be, you're looking straight ahead and then where's the runway? You're going to have to look to the side because you're coming in, in in a crab angle like this. And you have to keep that angle, which feels very un, unnatural. And then just before you're touching down, you have to straighten up the aircraft to be able to land at the runway. And especially at airfields like Madeira, it can prove a challenge because the wind is not steady. So you have to all the time throughout the approach work on your crab angle that you're having through the wind. And then at any time, if the wind goes above the limit that we're allowed to do, we have to add power to the engines again and go around and make the attempt again. A part of the runway rests on 180 pillars, and that's because the original was a lot shorter. But after two very serious accidents, it was expanded to 2,781 meters. So while it's still a challenge to land here, there hasn't been an accident since 1977. Number six is Troll Airfield in Antarctica. Massive cargo and passenger planes land here, but there are very few airstrips like Troll Airfield anywhere in the world. The runway sits on a glacier and is literally made of hard blue ice. There are several threats landing at an airport that's built on a glacier. First of all, there's no instrument approaches flying into Troll Airport. So you have to make sure that you're at all times of visual with the runway, which is not easy when everything is covered in snow. The biggest problem the airport has are holes that appear on the ice runway because of the sun. If the holes aren't found and patched up in time, the ice in those parts can become weak and give in. In addition, when you land, it's built on ice. Ice is living, ice is moving, which can create cracks down the runway, which adds for a huge threat to landing here. So constant monitoring and maintenance is needed. It's very, very slippery as well. So your tires and your brakes don't get the grip as they would be landing on a normal asphalt or gravel runway that we would usually land at. Number five is the Courchevel International Airport in France. This airport, tucked away in the French Alps, serves the ski resort in Courchevel. While it looks picture perfect, a couple of factors make this airport very dangerous. For one, the airport is at an altitude of over 2,000 meters and is surrounded by mountains, so the wind can get crazy. Secondly, the runway isn't flat. It has a gradient of 18.5% or an upslope. This helps planes slow down while landing but it makes taking off tricky. And that's largely because the runway is pretty short, measuring only 537 meters. Heavy snowfall and turbulent weather is frequent in winter. 
and sometimes landing is impossible. And on particularly icy days, planes have to be extra careful, otherwise they could crash into a wall of snow like this. Number four is St. Bart's Gustave III Airport in the Caribbean. The airport runway on the island of St. Bartholomew is crazy. Planes have a pretty steep descent to the runway, and that's because it's located at the bottom of a hilltop roundabout. This means planes always get a little too close for comfort. But that doesn't stop tourists from trying to take pictures as a plane approaches. The other challenge is that the runway ends right at the edge of the beach. And the planes who don't stop in time end up in the sand or in the water. Dude, that guy's gotta stop. Whoa. At number three is Princess Juliana International Airport on St. Martin's Island. You've probably seen those insane videos of large planes flying just a few feet above sunbathers. That's because Maho Beach is located at the end of the runway at Princess Juliana International Airport. The runway is 2,164 meters long and planes are forced to approach it over the water at an extremely low altitude. Very dangerous for people standing on the beach just next to it. Tourists tend to be drawn to this beach to experience this and it can be extremely dangerous to be standing where the aircraft are taking off because as we're putting thrust on our engines, that jet blast, it can literally blow you away. At number two is Paro International Airport in Bhutan. This airport sits at an altitude of 2,235 meters among mountains 5,500 meters high. And while the view is breathtaking, Landing here isn't that pretty. The runway is a little over 1,900 meters and the approach to it isn't straightforward. Planes have to zigzag between the mountains and on the last turn, they have to descend quickly onto the runway. 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 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 retard. Most planes don't land on the first go, and the second attempt requires them to do the maneuvering all over again. Only 17 pilots are trained and authorized to land here, one of whom is Bhutan's first female pilot, Captain Ujian Dema. On top of that, arrivals and departures are only allowed during the day. Finally, at number one is Tenzing Hillary Airport in Lukla, Nepal. Lukla is the most dangerous airport in the world and landing here is always a gamble. It sits at 2,845 meters above sea level and is the closest airport to the Mount Everest base camp. At this height, the air density is much lower, which is a problem for airplanes. It's located so high up in the mountains that even if your engines are spinning, the air is so thin, so it doesn't get the density that you would be landing at an airfield that's more close to sea level. And having all those mountains around you, would you need to add thrust? Because you, for any reason, can't land, there might not be sufficient and enough air density to actually get the thrust and the power that you need from your engines to attempt uh, a missed landing at this airfield. And the short 527 meter runway leaves no room for error. There's also no scope for a go around. So once a plane approaches, it must touch down. 20, 10, 5. 
Mist, fog, rain, and snow is unpredictable and can happen mid-flight. As a result, there have been many accidents at Lukla. One of the worst was when a flight crashed, killing everyone on board except the pilot. Dozens of people have died in a plane crash in Nepal. Have you traveled to any of these airports before? What was it like? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Explained.